We resume our mission to reunite information society in Southern California. We're in Burbank, California in pursuit of Paul Robb from Information Society. We're going to a post-production facility called Match Frame, and Paul is coming in for a meeting. He thinks it's an interview to compose music for a new reality TV show, but the interviewer is actually one of our producers. We're going to crash that meeting and invite him to a special one-night-only performance with his former bandmates. I'm on, a, on an independent film. Hi. Paul Rob? My name's Amir. I'm with a show called Bands Reunited. And uh, we're this here. This really is reality television. Yes, it is. Yes, it is indeed. Uh, we're here to ask you if you're willing to participate in a one time only special performance and reunion with your former bandmates in Information Society. Oh, my God. Um. Absolutely, of course. He's in! <laughs> that is the right answer, my friend. That's perfect. Thank you so much. That's me. That's him. That's Paul Robb. He is on board. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Paul was definitely the guy who wrote this material and kind of had the larger vision for the group. Let's talk about uh, what you're doing these days. Well, I've ended up doing a lot of music for... Uh, MTV shows like The Real World and Road Rules and sports specials and all that. Did a couple of films, worked with Trey and Matt from South Park on and The Wonderful Orgasm. The first meeting for Info Society, I think, took place in a dorm room at McAllister College. I wanted to start a band after we graduated from high school, and the only person I knew who could sing was my friend Kurt. I know. Because he was in choir, you see, and if you're in choir in high school, obviously you can, you've got what it takes to be a rock and roll singer, right? <laughs> how, did, uh, how did Jim join the group? Jim started out as a fan, graduated to a hanger-on, uh, then became our light man, was invited on stage one night to do a banjo solo, which of course fits right in with the Information Society <laughs> aesthetic. Um, and after that, he just started hanging around with us so much, and we liked him so much, we said, you should come in, you know, be in the band. And, you know, it turned out to be a very valuable addition to the group, actually. Probably saved, uh, we probably would have broken up sooner had it not been for, for Jim. Working with those guys was a lot like managing my parents' dysfunctional relationship. <laughs> and the other reason he was a valuable member of the band is because he brought another valuable member of the band into the four, like Amanda. That's true. When Jim came back with Amanda, it was the four of us from that point on. What was it like uh, on the road with these, with these guys? Like Kurt secluded himself, as, uh, as lead singers are apt to do right. in these types of stories, because, as you know, offstage, things were falling apart. I don't think Kurt enjoyed being on the road as much as the rest of us. And let's face it, Kurt had the bulk of the work to do on stage. And how would you describe him? He was very conflicted, because on the one hand, he was the rock star. And none of us were rock stars. Kurt could have been a real rock star. You know, he was a rock. He was a star. He was the star of the show, for sure. But he didn't really want to be. That's the problem. He always wanted to be, the, you know, like a producer or someone working behind the scenes. But he was naturally charismatic. You know, he, he had charisma that, that all the rest of us lacked. And, and that's what, uh, you know, that was what we needed. What about the, the relationship with you and Kurt? Would you describe it as a sibling rivalry? Kurt and I are both blowhards and know-it-alls, and we both want to control everything in our lives. I, tr I tried to kick Kurt out, actually, after we got signed to Tommy Boy, um, and the label said, no, you're not going to do that. Why did you want to kick him out? Oh, because we were fighting about something. I don't know. <laughs> That's when I realized I wasn't in complete control of the band anymore, when right. I tried to kick someone out and I wasn't allowed to do it. How did Amanda announce her departure? How did she, how did you guys find out that she wanted to leave? She didn't really announce it. She just kind of left. Not a phone call or a, a meeting or anything like that to say that she was leaving? I'm going to let her explain it. Okay. Because I don't want to explain it in a way that would make her mad. Okay. So if you actually locate her and get her to do it, right. I'll be interested to hear what she has to say. Let's put it that way. What told you ultimately that it was time to go? There was, a, there was a famous meeting that we had called the Black Day of Death, where I tried to lay down the law 
and I formulated my famous three principles of the music business. It's easy, it's fun, and you make a lot of money. And I said, if any one of those three factors isn't present, I'm quitting. And really, you know, that's what happened. Who do you think is going to be the toughest for me to convince? I can't even begin to predict what Kurt's going to say. Really? Yeah. yeah. He described the, the band years as the worst years of his life. Paul agreed to the reunion, but refused to shed any light on Amanda's departure. He did inform us of Kurt's whereabouts, but made it clear that Kurt will be a tough sell. When Bands Reunited returns, lead singer Kurt Harlan plays hard to get. I think it's a bad idea. And Amanda Kramer's sudden departure gets more mysterious. The whole thing has too much personal resonance for me. I don't want to go there.